Welcome to the Heartbeat of Holliston. I'm Chris O'Lawless. And I'm Melissa Caspern. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Ready for spring? I heard lots of birds the other morning when I was uh, waking up. So I think it's here, getting there. Yeah. And the snow's gone. Almost. Almost. My house is like a microclimate. Everyone else's snow is gone. Our, ours is still white. Yeah. So, but it's coming. I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> We're almost there. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Well, on tonight's show, we bring you up close and personal with high school principal Nicole Bottomley, meet Boy Scout Troop 73, and talk to a local author about his book on Bruce Springsteen. We'll also introduce you to a new bookstore in town and its owners. Thanks for joining us, and let's get this show rolling. Tonight, we introduce you to the producers, announcers, teachers, and personalities that make HCAT shows happen. In this video, we have an important message for you regarding the future of local cable access TV. The Federal Communications Commission is considering rule changes that would severely impact funding for community television. This is an immediate and very real danger that could force many public educational government centers, otherwise known as PEG, to close their doors within the next year. Right now, Verizon and Comcast pay a small percentage of their gross annual revenues to the town of Holliston in exchange for the use of public rights of way. The biggest threat to these PEG centers is that the FCC seeks to change the rules in how they get their funding. The new rules state that cable companies can reclassify costs associated with PEG programming. The result would be that many cities and towns in Massachusetts would be forced to decide whether or not to continue public access in our communities. Put simply, this could be the end of public access television in Holliston. No more heartbeat of Holliston. No more pastor and the policeman. No more FinCom coverage. No more just thinking. No more how does your garden grow. No, no more, more money in the law. law. No more school committee coverage. No, no more sport view. view. No more my beating heart. No more equipment for communication classes. We need your help. Mass Access is working on behalf of community television stations to file opposition to the proposed FCC rule changes. Filing opposition is our best chance of either preventing these new rules or reversing the decision on appeal. The more voices heard, the bigger the impact. To see how you can save community television, go to www.massaccess.org. Join me in calling our Congresswoman Catherine Clark and our U.S. Senators Ed Markey and Elizabeth Warren to let them know how important local cable is to you. Submit your comments. Stop the rule change. Make your voice heard. Save community television. Save, Save all the cable access. If you like these programs and think local cable access TV is important to Holliston, please consider supporting us. Holliston's youth have been active in scouting for many years. Eagle Scout is the highest achievement, and this year three scouts from Troop 73 were installed at a Court of Honor celebration. Heartbeat of Holliston is here at the Court of Honor for Troop 73 to see three of their scouts become Eagle Scouts. On behalf of Troop 73 and the Dyke Planning and the Halfway Family, I'd like to welcome you. To be an Eagle Scout, you have to go through all the ranks uh, of scouting. Um, and then when you get to Life Scout, which is around the age of 16 years old, uh, there are certain requirements that uh, you have to do to, to achieve that rank. You have to earn 21 merit badges, including 13 merit badges that are Eagle required. While Life Scout, you have to plan, develop, give leadership to others in a community service project. And now with the senior crew leader, please come forward and everyone please rise and close I'm the Eagle coach in Troop 73. So what I asked them to do is to pick an organization that they really feel uh, strongly about that they would like to help. Andrew, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. It's been a long time coming. It has. A lot of work. A lot of work. Can you tell folks uh, what your project was? My project was to build two 36-foot boardwalks in the Weena King Woods uh, to replace the ones that were previously there, which no longer serve their purpose of allowing people to cross swampier areas. 
So it helps with bikers and walkers trying to access different areas of the woods. I did all the cutting at my house and I loaded up the trucks and brought it to the woods where we placed them and then uh, once they were all placed we hammered them in. How many other scouts did you get involved in this? I got about five different scouts. Uh, it w we did a lot of more individual work. A lot of people did a lot of different things, but I made sure that I had the best people for the job and they did it well. Have you had a chance to use it? I have. It works very well. And I've, when I was in the woods to check them out uh, about a month after I built them, I had uh, lots of bikers biking by and saying it was great. They were, they were finally able to get by in the wet seasons of spring. Well, my name is with distinct honor and pleasure how did you select your project? My neighbor is the CEO of Amigo Inc., which is a nonprofit that gives services to adults living with autism. So I was talking to him and we decided on a project where I would be able to convert a garage at one of their homes where the adults living with autism live in as a group home. And I would convert that garage into a multi-purpose room where the residents could really socialize with each other and spend time doing arts and crafts, um, just enjoying time with each other. It says a lot of painting. Um, we put a foam flooring down. I built a game table for them and installed shelving. So about 160 hours of work total to finish the project. And now have you been back to see it in use with the kids using it? So I've gone back once just to make sure everything was set and there was anything else we needed to do. Um, but it looks awesome and I know the residents are really enjoying the space. James Hathaway, it is with distinct honor and pleasure that Mr. Timon will present you with the Eagle Award. So I knew I wanted to do a project for the Holliston Rail Trail, so I approached the Trails Commission. Uh, for the town of Holliston and asked them what projects they needed done. So what really stuck out to me was bridge railings that they needed across a few bridges in Holliston. So I picked one out. It's a 30-foot bridge that goes across Chicken Brook. So what I did was I built two railings, one on each side of the bridge. It was about a 20-kid project. It took one day to complete, which was awesome. There were so many people there. It was a great turnout. We ended up cutting everything on site. We had a generator there, thanks to the Trails Committee. I've been back there a few times. It looks great. Uh, one of the, the head of the Trails Committee told me he had to cut up a tree that fell about six inches away from the bridge the other day. So, Wow. But, so it, it's holding up. Yeah, it's holding up. That's great. But I'm not sure that tree would have. <laughs> might have taken it down. Yeah. And now let's welcome the Assistant Scoutmaster and Eagle Coach of Troop 73, Mike Timon. How are you, Mike? Very well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Good. Thanks Good. for being here. Uh, some amazing projects that those... Uh, boys completed. Terrific project. Every project is a good project, but those were those were exceptional projects. Yeah, they were yeah. very very good. So tell us a little bit about Troop Seventy Three. How many um, kids are in the troop as as of right now? Um, troop Seventy Three has been uh, in existence for since nineteen eighty four. Uh, they broke off of, a, a, of one of the other troops. Uh, right now, we currently have thirty seven scouts. Mm -hmm. which is a very, very healthy troop. Mm -hmm. yeah. At all different levels of scouting all, then? All, all different levels, yeah, from the age of 12 to the age of 18, 17, 18, yes. Yeah. We're, one of, we're one of three uh, troops in town. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So in, in total, Holliston uh, scouting has been really important in town for a long time. I, it is. It's know. live and well, for sure, in Holliston. Yeah. It's, uh, we have, th we have two, two packs. There's approximately 90, 90 Cub Scouts, and we have three troops with so approximately 90 Boy Scouts. Wow. So combined, we have about 180 Boy Scouts and, and yeah. Cub Scouts mm -hmm. in town. That's great for this mm -hmm. size community. That's a really... It's one, yeah, it's, it's terrific. It's, people, people are amazed that the town of Holliston can support something like that. Okay, so there's a lot of town support and from the pam parents and the, the scout leaders. Yeah, well, scout leaders, I, I, I want a little shout out to the leaders yeah. because um, it's incredible the amount of hours that a leader puts in to make sure that it's a good, healthy scouting program in town. So. Now, have you seen a lot of change in the scouting program? Because you've been involved for quite a few years at Troop 73, correct? I have, yes, yes. Um, I think... It tends to be now more more scouts tend to want to achieve the rank of eagle oh, really? than, than have in the past. Yeah, uh, we encourage that. 
um, but we also support those scouts who don't want to become an Eagle Scout, uh, just to get them out in the outdoors, teach them life skills, teach them camping skills, mm -hmm. um, first aid, um, necessary things you would need if you were going to be out in the wild. I think that maybe that self-reliant part is what's really important with scouting because yeah. not kids don't get that very much anymore. They they do not. They yeah. do not. And not only that, but we have uh, some of the um, the scouts are single parent, and it's very very important. I think that you have a male role model in your, uh, with, especially with teenage boys. Yeah, mm -hmm. teenage boys is a very delicate time for the boys. Um, it's very very important that we have a male, uh, some sort of a male leadership there for. Yeah, and it's not only the camping, but they learn, I know for Eagle Scout, they have to do like citizenship and, you know, right. there's a whole other side to the scouting program outside of what we traditionally think of, correct? That's correct, yeah. The first three ranks are geared towards skills, uh, camping skills, outdoor skills, and at that point we feel as though we've, we've trained them and taught them all that we could. And then from that point on, you get into merit badge work, which is uh, very specifically, um, and sometimes it leads, it, it leads to a career. Mm -hmm. I was just going to ask you, how many, have any Eagle Scouts come back that have been successful in life and pointed to you at their Eagle Scout experience as helpful? Um, they tend to disappear once they leave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They do come back for the holidays. We, we, yeah. I encourage them to come back yeah. um, for the holidays and whatnot. Um, we just had one of, one of our Scouts just got his doctorate degree in physics, and he's coming oh, wow. out in California. He's coming back to work at MathWorks. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another scout who also works at MathWorks. Uh, he's got his master's there. Um, so yeah. it's, uh, um, it's, yeah, it's a very, very, it's a great program. It's a Sounds program. like a future scoutmaster of Troop 73 right there. Uh, he got yes. his PhDs oh, coming back. Yes, yeah. That's so, right. yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. We had our first Eagle. Uh, we have a, 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 one of our dads is an Eagle Scout from our troop. And he's the first one to come back with a, with a son, mm -hmm. back into the same troop. See, which is, yeah. And his name's right up there on the plaque, and so it's, it's wonderful it's great. to see a that. a legacy. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. See that. yeah. So it continues. Yeah, yeah. 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 What's, the, uh, what's the biggest challenge, then, um, in, in keeping in scouting now, or, or in Holliston? Or? Um, we're very, I should say we're strict, but we, we're, we're very in tune to uh, manners, Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Respect for yep. other people. Um, we don't get a lot of that. I don't see a lot of that out there today for the younger kids, yeah. and we demand it mm -hmm. in our troop. And um, and the the boys do okay with it. Yeah, they really do. Okay. They really. Uh, yeah. And it, what I'll do at a troop meeting, I'll walk around and I'll say, um, "What good turn did you do today?" Mm -hmm. And I make them stop and think. And I always tell them, don't make anything up. I want, if you didn't do anything, just tell me no. <laughs> no, that's fine. I, I have no problem with that. But, yeah. um, but uh, it, it, it gets them thinking. That, sure. You mm -hmm. know, he might come up and ask me, so I better do something good today before I go to the meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Help somebody else out. Yeah. 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 So. so what's your favorite um, activity when it comes to the scouting and working with uh, the young gentleman in Holliston? Um, I really enjoy... The whole Eagle program, mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it, there's a, so much to that program. Um, we guide them, but we make them do all the work. Um, and um, towards the end, they, they start to get it, <laughs> which is <laughs> yeah. amazing. It starts to, starts to click a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It starts yeah. to click, yeah. yeah. That's so, awesome. but that's, and then uh, sometimes come the, the young guys coming in. Yeah. That is such a challenge, but it is so much fun to watch them. We have pictures and whatnot from when they're 12 years old to when they're standing there up in front getting their eagle badge at 17 years old. Mm -hmm. And they have so, so much maturity mm -hmm. compared to what they used to be. And it becomes almost, they almost talk to you on the same level as opposed to looking up to a leader. Yeah. Um, we could talk one-on-one -on -one as opposed to, you know, that... Yeah. Uh, Leader, leader, scout type relationship. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's not many activities where you really get to see that. That you, know, part, you get that, them from yeah. the end of right. fifth grade through right. yeah. really they graduate right. high school. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah. Right. And we really get to know them. We go. We go off to summer camp. We we're at camp for seven days. Mm -hmm. um, we we dine together. We we you know we do all of our activities together. Mm -hmm. um, so you really 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 get to know them. You get to know their idiosyncrasies and, and all the different things that go with, with uh, you know, working with the boys. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. 
great. Well, we certainly applaud all the uh, many hours I know that you've put into Troop 73 and the, the programming, and it sounds like I know you um, stepped down a little bit from Scoutmaster, but it sounds like you're still very involved and mm -hmm. maybe even more so. I think I am. Point. I think yeah. I'm busier now than I've ever been yeah, yeah. for some yeah. reason. I don't know why. But we have good leadership that was taken over for the troop, and yeah. uh, I'm there to support them and to guide them and to you know, help them uh, find their way as I, as I did when I when I yeah. became a leader in the scouts scouting mm -hmm. program too. Yeah. So. Well, it's so important to, you know, have these types of programs and to still yes. offer that. The Eagle Scout, I know it's such a feather in the cap of any of the boys that achieve yeah. that rank. It so is. thank you. It's, you're very welcome. Yeah. It's, it's, it's my pleasure. It's really been a lot of fun. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Coming up next, Heartbeat presents our special production of Who Are You in Real Life? This is where our viewers get up close and personal with notable individuals in Holliston. Tonight you'll meet Nicole Bottomley and hear about her journey to becoming our high school principal and her life away from school. Hi, I'm Melissa Casper, and for this segment of Who Are You? I'm with high school principal Nicole Bottomley. Thanks for joining us. I'm happy to be here. Thanks. So we're just going to go over a few questions, find out a little bit more about who you are in real life. I know a lot of times students don't realize that you have a real life. That I leave the school and <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. you live somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So why don't you first tell us a little bit about where did you grow up? Sure. So I grew up in Newton, um, was there my entire life. Actually, the house I grew up in, my mom still lives in that house and my parents got married in the living room of that house. So oh, that was sweet. our whole, whole life was there and I um, went to college in Waltham and then came out this area. So I haven't traveled that far. Yeah, well, why leave Massachusetts you if go. you don't have to, right? <laughs> um, and who would you say is the most influential person in your life? So I would definitely say my father. Um, he, so he, really throughout my life, he was just an inspiration. Um, he battled his own um, medical issues throughout his life and it never ever changed his uh, outlook on life, always incredibly positive, um, really level-headed, never really got angry despite mm -hmm. uh, having my, myself and my brother as teenagers, um, but really just an amazing inspiration and um, somebody who, you know, I really looked up to and, and um, I talked to on a regular basis. He had passed away two years ago, um, but I still, mm -hmm. you know, think of him every day yeah. and um, he was very into um, cooking and so I have a whole book of his recipes and oh, nice. kind of every day when I'm cooking yeah. I, I think of him well I'm not cooking every day but when I am cooking um, I think of him and he's just um, you know he's he's a true inspiration in terms of just his positive spirit and mm -hmm. his uh, kindness to others as well just um, a really good person oh great that must really help the level-headedness with uh I dealing try. with your <laughs> students. I try. I try. Um, and speaking of students and children, do you have children? As well? I do. Okay. So I have two little ones. Um, my son Braden just turned two in oh. February, and my daughter Madison will be five in a couple of weeks. So I have two lovely, energetic <laughs> little ones at home. Nice. And um, a little bit about your background. How did you become a principal of, of Holliston High School? So I went to Brandeis in Waltham for my undergrad. And um, my senior year, I decided to student teach, never actually thinking that I would be at this point in my career, mm -hmm. really just thinking it would look good on a resume. I would student teach, wasn't sure what I wanted to be when I grew up. So I student taught at Framingham High School. So I was hired for that and then for the following year. And then 10 years later, I <laughs> made my way over here. The more more that I was involved in the school as a whole, so I ran student government and um, did a whole bunch of other things at the school, and the more I stepped out of the classroom, as much as I loved being in the classroom, mm -hmm. I really loved being able to see the whole picture of the school. Mm -hmm. So I interviewed here, and I became an assistant principal, and I was an assistant principal for three years, and then became principal, and now I'm in my sixth year here, So, and wow. I love it. I can't imagine doing anything else but I would not have said this is where I was going to be if yeah. you had asked me 20 years ago. So. Well, I think sometimes that's, you know, it works out the way it's mm -hmm. supposed to be. I agree. And it sounds like for you it really has. Yeah. yeah. So a few um, thought-provoking questions. We're going to ask some of your favorites. Sure. So <laughs> favorite food? French fries. French fries. Hands down French fries. <laughs> yep. If I could eat them every day mm -hmm. and if they were a healthy food, I would have them every day. Um, but yes, French fries in every form. So. All right. Uh, TV show. <laughs> So as much as I definitely stay up on the news and watch a lot of 
important TV. I am a big fan of The Real Housewives. I am too. Uh, so. In any city. <laughs> so I will watch um, pretty much Real Housewives Atlanta or Beverly Hills or wherever. It's a good escape. It is. It is. I absolutely <laughs> love it. <laughs> uh, how about movies? Are you a movie buff at all? I am. Um, I would say Remember the Titans is one of my favorites. I mm -hmm. used to actually show that when I taught sociology, but it's just there's so many great messages in it and it's there's a lot there. I would also say One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. It's an older movie, yeah. but it's just such a phenomenal movie. There's so many really deep issues in that. So I know that, you know, you would you're at the high school a lot, mm -hmm. you live nearby, so you don't get much escape, mm -hmm. but what is your dream vacation if you could go anywhere? Dream vacation. Um, I would love to go to Australia. I have not been to Australia. I would mm -hmm. love to go to Australia. I'd love to go to Sydney. I'd love to go to the beaches and see the city and, and just sort of make my way all around different cities in Australia. That would be amazing. Um, I've been to a number of different places around. Prague is one of my favorite cities. Oh, I've always wanted to I'd go there. love to get back yeah. there. I actually went when I was in high school on a class trip and oh, I spent fun. a few weeks there. Um, and I've been to Italy as well and spent a, a decent amount of time in Florence, which is beautiful as well. But I would say probably Australia just because I've never been and mm -hmm. I've just I've always wanted to go so. yeah that's that's not a bad place to go no. <laughs> um, so we've kind of talked about you know you didn't think of this as what you were going to do with your career in yeah. life but if you couldn't be a high school principal if that was off the table being in education what would your dream job be something that would maybe something that would allow me to travel throughout the world yeah. you know, we were just talking about um, Australia something that would allow me to travel um, something that would allow me to make a difference in the world you know I've had various kind of part-time jobs in my life when I was in high school I worked at Rosie's place which is a women's shelter in Boston oh, okay. and it was a phenomenal experience I worked there for about a year so, so again that's along the lines of really helping yeah. and supporting people who um, don't necessarily have the resources that that they need yeah so. no um, and any hobbies? You know, I, I figure skated my whole life, so I did shows oh, and competitions wow. my whole life, and my daughter just went figure skating for the first time. Oh. I mean, figure skating, you know, she was kind of holding a chair as yeah, she went yeah, around yeah. the ice, but um, so she, we just did that a few weeks ago. So figure skating has always been a huge passion and, and hobby yeah. of mine. Music. I'm a. I love listening to music and going to shows. And most people don't know that I love heavy metal music, and that's, oh, that's not great. something that people normally guess. Um, so you know, if I can go to some some rock and roll or heavy metal shows, I do frequent those. Motley Crue so. just announced a tour. Oh, I know. You know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am aware. So, no, I, I, I pay attention to that stuff, and my husband actually plays in a band as well, and he's um, very much up on the music scene. So oh, very fun. I'm, I stay informed through him as well. Oh, good. Um, and our last question that we ask everyone, what's your favorite place in Holliston? So, you know, I don't live in Holliston, so I, I don't claim to be um, incredibly knowledgeable about every single place in Holliston. I do frequent Coffee Haven quite a bit. They have That's a, a great place. wrap there. Uh, they're super friendly. I love looking at the books that they have available. They mm -hmm. have a pretty great um, kid section, so I, when I'm waiting for my food, I tend to browse through those books. So Coffee Haven is definitely a favorite of mine. Um, and and then, of course, Holliston High School. And oh, I, well, that goes without yeah, saying. Exactly. We didn't even have to mention that. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks so much. Hopefully, our viewers have found out a little bit more about you. And we do know that you know our administration and teachers definitely have a full life outside of Holliston <laughs> High School. But we are very lucky to have you here. So thank you again for talking with us today. Oh, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Great. For Heartbeat of Holliston, I'm Melissa Caspern. I hope you enjoyed Who Are You in Real Life? Heartbeat will bring you more personalities in the future. Who doesn't love rock and roll? Holliston resident Barry Schneier is a lifelong fan and professional photographer. He put his passions together in a book about Bruce Springsteen. Our newest reporter, Brian Winston, is a huge Bruce fan, and he obviously loved covering this story. When I mention songs like Born to Run, Jungle Land, and Thunder Road, do you picture a New Jersey rock legend? who was once dubbed the future of rock and roll. Me too, and you know we're talking about the boss, Bruce Springsteen. We have our own Holliston connection to Bruce Springsteen. It's Barry Schneier, who is a photographer who photographed one of Bruce's most famous shows back in 1974 in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And we're here to talk with Barry about his new book. So, Barry, let's start with a little bit about you. Where did you grow up? What area of the country are you from? Uh, I'm actually from not too far from here. I actually was born just outside of Boston. Uh, family moved to Newton when I was three years old, 
and pretty much was uh, raised in Newton. And how did you get into photographing uh, musicians? Well, you know, it's interesting. When I've looked back at my work from that era, what I realized was I must have had my camera with me all the time because I photographed everything. I like to photograph things I ran into, whether it be people or an interesting scenario. Um, whatever sort of appealed to me, I would take a photograph of. And I also had a great love for music. I always had a love for music. And was photographing some friends of mine who had bands. And there was a time when I met uh, a fellow named Ira Gold. And he told me that he was a, a music promoter in town. So I said, you know, if you're ever interested in having somebody photograph your shows, I'd love to do it. So I started photographing his shows. He and his partner, Jeff Hirsch, working with Dick Waterman, um, were a body race management team. And so I started photographing all the shows that they, that they produced. Now, this is early 70s? Yeah, this is mid-70s. Mid this is like 73, 74. Did a lot of shows with Bonnie. Uh, locally, uh, shot her with uh, Jackson Brown, uh, Little Feet, a lot of times. Great band, uh, Paul Butterfield band, Van Morrison. Van Morrison comes to mind. The reason we're here is because of your new, your new book uh, coming out about Bruce Springsteen and uh, Rock and Roll Future. Uh, tell me about a little bit about how... How that all kind of came about, where you where you got involved with uh, with his show and photographing him. He was playing over at the, at Charlie's place in Cambridge, and I just remember the band came on. It had this sound of funk and jazz and R and B and rock, and they were tight and they were animated. And he was a showman, and I just said to myself, two things. One was I've never heard music like that before in my life, and the other was I've got to hear this guy again somehow. So what I did is the next day I called Ira Gold from Window Pane Productions, and I said, you've, you've got to put this guy on the show. It's just amazing. And I was honest with him. I just want to see him again. So they basically said to Bruce, uh, would you like to open for Bonnie Raitt? And I, I think he basically gave them his manager's card and said, sure, call him. And they booked him to uh, open up for Bonnie. Amazing. Amazing to think of Bruce as a relatively unheard of, uh, of act, but a, a different time back then. So that leads us to that. That magical night in uh, in Harvard Square on May fourth, nineteen seventy four, where that became a famous night in uh, Bruce Springsteen and rock and roll history. Well, you know, it's interesting because one of the things that I really remember was um, how he opened the uh, the show. He comes to the stage, and I remember there was like just a single blue light on him, and he sort of leans in. And he goes, "Meanwhile, in New York City," and then David Sanchez starts playing the opening notes to New York City Serenade. And I'm thinking to myself, what is he doing? This is a rock and roll band. Nobody knows who he is. And he's opening up with this melodic, almost classical piece. But then I realized after, you know, 30 seconds, when you couldn't hear a pin drop into place, that he had had the audience in his hands. And I realized, no, nah, he knows what he's doing. He wants to basically bring them in and kind of own them for the moment and and take him from there. I just remember that was just an amazing moment that he opened up that way. The concert was in 1974. The book's coming out now in 2019. 45 years later. Yeah, so tell me, how did this all come about? A lot of people all over the years were asking me, I want to hear the story behind that. And, well, tell me about this photo. Tell me about that photo. And how did you get so close to the stage? So I started writing some uh, essays, a kind of one-off, just to you know, post on social media. And more and more interest was, was coming around. So I just kind of spent the last few years kind of writing them stories, thinking back, kind of digging into it, thinking about how would I develop sort of a story arc. Because the book, unlike some other books that are photography books of musicians, it's not all, it's not just photography. It's photography and narrative. Because I wanted to uh, tell the story of the night. I wanted to tell the stories behind the photos, which people have been asking for. And I also wanted to put it into context of the era, like we discussed earlier. It was a different time, and I want people to understand what it was like then. We are going to be offering the book uh, locally through some, uh, some, some book events. Uh, we're going to be doing one at the Harvard Coop. And uh, we're going to be doing actually one in Halston at uh, Aesop's Fable, I think it's called, the new bookstore. They've been talking to me about coming down there. And so we, it's fun. We do talks. We sell the books. So that will be one of the places. But people can order it online from back streets. Barry, this has been fantastic. Thank you. As a Bruce fan myself, I've, I've loved talking to you and hearing the stories about, uh, about that historic night and, and your take on music, especially at that special time in the mid-70s. Well, oh, great. Glad to, uh, glad to have been able to talk to you as well. If dreams came true, wouldn't that be nice? But this ain't no dream we're living through tonight. And through Barry's stories and lens, uh, we lived through this historic night. I'm Brian Winston, and this is Heartbeat of Holliston. 
Barry's book is called Bruce Springsteen, Rock and Roll Future. It's available through local booksellers. Barry's website, barryschneierphotography.com, is a fantastic collection of photos. Check it out, and you'll even see some familiar Hollison people and places. In Barry's interview, he mentions Aesop's Fable, which is one of Holliston's newest businesses. Andrew and Leah Yuri have transformed the lower level of the Wilder building under the Crafted Store into a warm and inviting space. Here is their story. Aesop's Fable is a new bookstore in Holliston. Let's go in and see what it's about. say 25 years ago I, I was searching for books after college and absolutely fell in love with bookstores and it took a long time but uh, we finally I think a couple years ago said we're gonna pursue our dream and make it happen and here we are. It's a little sooner we thought it would be a retirement dream <laughs> we're not quite there yet but um, it's exciting. When we thought about having a bookstore, certainly it wanted to be close to where we were, um, but we also looked at the community, so we live in Sherborne and Holliston. I think they both need a bookstore, and actually where we found this location um, is right in between the two. So we thought it was a perfect place for the community. We also wanted something that was uh, had some character, and I think hopefully we've, we've achieved that with this space, and uh, I, I think it's ultimately a good space for us to grow into over time as well. I'm really excited. Um, I'm a former English teacher, now I work in schools, um, and I'm happy to have a, a small, you know, sort of locally owned bookshop really close to where we live, so we're really excited. I frequent bookstores all the time, uh, so I'm really excited to have a local one. Once a month, we're going to have an adult uh, fiction book club. We have a story time for the little guys every Thursday morning at 10.30, and that's gotten a lot of traction. We have a good little group coming in there, so that's been fun. We hope to have um, a lot of author events at least once a month going forward, but we have our first one scheduled on the 30th. The other thing is we're really looking to use the space for community uh, involvement, and we've had a couple of customers here in the first, uh, first day even ask if we would start to do more gaming types events and um, and actually several people have asked about Dungeons and Dragons so we now stock Dungeons and Dragons books and are hoping to uh, start at least one weekly club. What do you like best about this bookstore? Um, I like um, all the books. What's your favorite kind of book? Um, the Lion and the Mouse. The Lion and the Mouse. Have you found that book here? Yeah. I like it. I like Legos. What about books? Do you love books? Yeah. We wanted to have this kind of bookstore uh, because of our children, to spend more time with them, a place that they could find fun. Hopefully other children will find uh, a lot of fun, and it's, it's a great place, I think, to explore. It's lost its appeal a little bit, though, especially for the four-year-old. It's hard for her not to, um, to understand that not everything in the store is hers to take, <laughs> especially. And the boys, we've been putting to work a little bit, so they're getting a little, a little lesson of, of self-employment. <laughs> Sounds like this is a dream come true. It is certainly something that um, is, is, was on the bucket list, and we're having a lot of fun with it. Uh, certainly, small business is a lot more work, I think, than you imagine before you get into it, but I think we're at a point where we're, we're enjoying it a lot and, and certainly seeing the, uh, the fruits of all the hard work that made it get to this point. We actually met um, working together. We worked for a consulting firm, so I kind of think it's like we've come full circle, and now we're working together again. It's kind of fun. <laughs> We're going to have some great reading experiences here at Aesop's Fable. For Heartbeat of Holliston, this is Chris O'Lawless. Independent bookstores are definitely reviving. Find out what is happening at Aesop's Fable by visiting their website, www.aesopsfable.com, and sign up for their newsletter. And better yet, visit them and take part in a new literary experience right here in Holliston. Well, that's it for this show. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we did. Remember, you can watch Heartbeat of Paulson every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 7 p.m. on Channel 8 Comcast and Channel 32 Verizon. The show is also televised at other times. You can watch us on any electronic device. Just go to the HCAT website, www.hcattv.org, for easy access. And join all the others who are watching Heartbeat on Facebook and YouTube by checking HCAT's Facebook and YouTube pages. 
We also have an updated eBlast function, which sends out announcements when new shows are scheduled to air. If you would like to be on this list, just contact us by email at office at hcattv.org or call 508-429-8979. With an eBlast, you'll never miss a show you want to watch. Good night, Melissa. Good night, Chriso. And, and good, good night, night Holliston. Holliston.